asked whether in the years to come it will be possible to kill 40 million American people in the 20 largest American towns by the use of atomic bombs in a single night. I am afraid that the answer to that question is yes. In the early 1940s, World War II raged on with no clear solution visible to military leaders or scientists. Robert Oppenheimer then led the charge to facilitate the creation, development, and utilization of the atomic bomb. In 1945, the world entered the nuclear era as the world's first nuclear explosion shocked the world due to the leadership of Robert Oppenheimer. The elimination of Japan from a possible threat to the United States was due to the creation, development, and utilization of the atomic bomb. As a result of Japan surrendering due to the atomic bomb, worldwide interest in nuclear weapons exploded, thus creating the legacy of the nuclear era. By the end of World War II, 60 million people lost their lives. There could have been another 2 to 5 million or even more included within that number. Without the foresight to create the atomic bomb, Robert Oppenheimer led an undercover operation known as the Manhattan Project to uncover the solution to the war, the atomic bomb. Oppenheimer worried, along with other brilliant minds at the time, such as Albert Einstein, that Nazi Germany was creating their own nuclear weapon as well. The race to create, develop, and utilize atomic weaponry was pressed. Albert Einstein wrote, We all felt that there was a high probability that the Germans were looking on this problem and that they might succeed and use the atomic bomb and become the master race. The idea that American men, women, and children would be defenseless from an atomic bomb drove Oppenheimer to work tirelessly after the bombing of Pearl Harbor, America would not allow for the same tragedy to occur twice or in the same war. Oppenheimer then assembled a group of scientists who, with their individual strengths in physics, could collaborate under Oppenheimer to create the world's first nuclear weapon. The surrender of Japan is directly linked to the utilization of the atomic bomb. Japan surrendered after realizing that if they do not, the United States has the capability to eliminate entire cities. Japan saw that they were a checkmate and surrendered, eliminating them as a threat to the United States. The United States removed this threat due to the leadership of Oppenheimer in the Los Alamos Laboratory, a remote area where Oppenheimer hand-selected from personal experience as a young man venturing into adulthood. Oppenheimer had the foresight to establish a laboratory that was isolated from the outside world. The isolated lab would provide shelter from possible spies, as well as shelter to the scientists who required their complete attention to create such a game-changing weapon. Oppenheimer selected the location of Los Alamos due to his experience of knowing the isolation of the area. Once the location was picked out, Oppenheimer still had doubts. No scientist knew exactly what would happen when the bomb was detonated, or even if the bomb would detonate. The uncertainty drove some scientists to question whether their actions at the laboratory would even mean anything. Oppenheimer, with his persistent personality, ensured that these scientists would be re-motivated and would continue to pursue their efforts in creating the nuclear weapon they set out to create. Oppenheimer carried a particular asset. Oppenheimer, besides his intellect, carried the unique capability to reason and interact with other scientists who disputed his ideas. Instead of simply dismissing their ideas, Oppenheimer would reason and question why they thought that way, and through calculations would come to a general compromise. The primary issue Oppenheimer had to deal with as leader of the Manhattan Project was how to address an issue that had never been attempted before. How would he motivate scientists to pursue an idea that had no physical concrete evidence of even working, or had no concrete foundation on where to start, what materials to use, what would work, what wouldn't work, what would end in a disaster, or what would end in success. Thanks to Oppenheimer, the leader of the Manhattan Project, the operation was a success. A short time ago, an American airplane dropped one bomb on Hiroshima and destroyed its usefulness to the enemy.
That bomb has more power than 20,000 tons of TNT. The Japanese began the war from the air at Pearl Harbor. They have been repaid many fold, and the end is not yet. With this bomb, we have now added a new and revolutionary increase in destruction to supplement the growing power of our armed forces. In their present form, these bombs are now in production, and even more powerful forms are in development. It is an atomic bomb. It is a harnessing of the basic power of the universe. The force from which the sun draws its power has been loosed against those who brought war to the Far East. We have spent more than $2 billion on the greatest scientific gamble in history, and we have won. But the greatest marvel is not the size of the enterprise, its secrecy, or its cost, but the achievement of scientific brains in making it work. President Harry Truman announced the bombing of Hiroshima. Albert Einstein, alongside Oppenheimer, worried about the new dangerous door they had opened to the world. The nuclear era had started. Oppenheimer quoted, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. An atomic bomb had the potential of ending life on Earth. The arms race followed, providing a scene of insecurities Oppenheimer and Einstein wrote about. Albert Einstein wrote, The politicians do not appreciate the possibilities and consequently do not know the extent of the menace. Robert Oppenheimer then quickly addressed his fears. Ask whether there are specific countermeasures against the atomic bomb. I know that the bombs that we make in Los Alamos cannot be exploded by such countermeasures. I do not think there is any foundation for the hope that such countermeasures will be found. I have been asked whether there is hope for the nation's security in keeping secret some of the knowledge in, which has gone into the making of the bombs. I am afraid there is no such hope. I think the only hope for our future safety must lie in a collaboration based on confidence and good faith with the other peoples of the world. The immediate solution to ending the war with Japan led to the arms race and ultimately the Cold War. A solution to an immediate issue almost caused the entire world to be wiped clean. The Cold War could have turned hot and then there would be the complete destruction of modern civilization. Life can still end on Earth today if the people of the respective nations do not regulate the growth, distribution, and most critically, the use of old and new atomic weaponry. He knew the world would not be the same. Few people laughed. Few people cried. Most people were silent. I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. Vishnu is trying to persuade the prince that he should do his duty. And to impress him, takes on his multi-armed form and says, now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. I suppose we all thought that one way or another.